Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I am she. I'm glad you're here. And um, this week, I called this week's episode Trauma, Drama, or Something Else is the Choice Yours. This show is going to be a deep dive into something I'm really handling in my own world right now. And an invitation, hi, Parisa, to come Taste the Salon de la Consciousness, which is a weekly study with me of the tools of access consciousness. Now, in the salon, we actually pick one of the access books and we go through it in great detail. And honestly, this membership has been one of the most game changing classes that I've ever done. In addition to kind of like my 500K business program, this one is up there at the top. It's so transformative. But the reason it's so transformative is because we literally take, you know, the books and we study them and we start looking at how we can apply those to our lives. And then, of course, there's the facilitation. So it's just really powerful. So I wanted to dive into today and really open up um, a, a part of my world that I'm really actively working with right now and changing and it has everything to do with trauma and drama or something else okay so we'll see where we go uh this is also just sort of a taste of the way the salon works so we dive into one of the books right now we're finishing up the distractor implant book and if you want a taste of the salon you can come to the call tomorrow there's a link that i'll put um, but next month we start the 10 keys to total freedom and so i will pull open where we're at in the book and i will start to read some of it and then you know, stuff comes up, questions come up in your world and et cetera. But because we're finishing the chapter or the book on distractor implants, which is called Living Beyond Distraction, um, the distractor implants have been really up in my world. And I know they've been up in a lot of other people's worlds. And so I've been really looking at them when I do them and what I can choose to beyond them. Okay. So what's been occurring for me is that if I'm going to have any insanity, if I'm going to do any trauma and drama, I am most likely going to do it around relationship. Now, how did Andres get so lucky? <laughs> um, access consciousness, whole goal, whole target is to give you access to more consciousness. And part of getting access to more consciousness is recognizing that 98% or 99.99999% of everything that goes on in your world is not yours. Um, it's something else. Now, the thing is that we were never educated on this. And, and, and then, you know, having found access consciousness, it's not, we haven't necessarily practiced it that much, which is the whole goal of the salon is to really start to work these tools into our life. And since we've been studying the distractor implants for six months, I've had a real chance to look at everywhere that I do them still. Now, the thing is about changing something that you're doing. So, you know, let's say you're doing some sort of trauma and drama around something. The thing about changing it is that what we're taught is that we go into the thing and we try to figure it out and the why and what we feel about it. And then we try to communicate about it. And, and that is supposed to be the pathway to change. But I don't know if you guys have tried that. That doesn't really work that well. What Gary Douglas is suggesting in the distractor implants is that every single thing we get into that is a part of creating trauma and drama is actually a distraction from the choices we have. Now, man, retraining yourself in that pathway is, is very interesting <laughs> because so, so you kind of first have to kind of get that. You kind of got to get on board with that, whether you, I mean, if it's lighter for you that that's true than it is to like feel your feelings and ask for your needs to be met, then, okay, that's what I mean by get on board. It's like really look at, okay, what's the actual way of changing this stuff? So I'll give you some examples from my life today um, in the latest iteration of what I'm being with myself to outcreate the drama and trauma that I've been doing. Um, you know, since moving here to Panama, we have a very different um, rhythm, a very different dynamic than being in London, Ontario in a suburban house where for the most part we were home all the time and then Luna would come over occasionally, right? So Andres and I are playing two totally different roles in our lives right now. He's the one going out and, you know, interfacing with 
all kinds of people. Uh, he speaks the language. He's He's got the connections. Mostly he speaks the language. And then I'm pretty much kind of here a lot handling um, the business and, you know, generating and, and all that stuff. And so it really works. Now, where it stops working is when I want to control. Now, I'm sharing this with you in mid mid cooked. I, I wouldn't say I'm fully baked on this one. I'm still really working with myself on this, but I wanted to kind of work with myself with you so that you can see maybe how you could work with yourself on something you're doing. The, the really, really important thing to get is that when you do any kind of trauma or drama around something, it's a creation. It's not real and it's not based on reality. Ease and joy and glory and I am power and I am control and I am money and I am awareness and I am creativity. All of those are from the How to Become Money workbook. That's what's true about you. Everything else, all the other struggles are what's, are based on something that's not true. Now, what's really insidious about a distractor implant, it's there to distract you. So it works most of the time, you know, unless we recognize that that's what we're doing. And, um, and they're everywhere. Everybody's doing them. So I bring up the fact that we just moved and that we moved to a different country to also say that not only do we have two different roles and we're like in a totally different rhythm than we were in London, um, you know, the distractor implant reality here and the entity reality here and the de demon reality here is very different than it was in London, Ontario. Why do I bring any and all of that up? You're aware. Now, if you don't acknowledge that you're aware, if you haven't really strengthened that awareness in your world that you're aware, if you haven't really learned how your awareness shows up and, you know, the fact that it can show up as intensities and feelings and moods and, you know, headaches and all kinds of other physical things, then and your situation has changed. And on top of all of that, maybe you've learned an insane way of being with something in an area. So for example, in relationship, all I learned was insanity in my life. So I'm actually training myself through the use of the tools and training myself through the access classes I'm taking. I'm learning something different on my own. You know, I didn't go to a school of uh, contributive relationships. I went to the school of insanity and fighting and judgment, right? So with all of that in play, it's pretty important that I start to recognize when stuff comes up, what it is. And there's four questions that were given in foundation that are foundational to addressing anything as what it is. And they go like this, well, what is it? What can I do with it? Can I change it? And if so, how can I change it? So with this particular thing that's going on for me, which is pretty much like, <laughs> If I am not given all the information right up front, then my conclusion is that you're doing something wrong. That's pretty much what I'm doing. That's where I'm functioning from a lot of the time. Now, I can pinpoint exactly where I learned that. That's exactly what my mother did um, for years with her husband and then ex-husband and then with us as kids. And she still does it, basically. So I can pinpoint where I learned it. But I caught myself doing it again today, right? And there's three elements for a great relationship. One, they contribute money or an energy that contributes more money. The sex is good. And number three, you let them do what they want and they let you do what you want. Those three elements and you have a good relationship. Without those three elements, you're always gonna have problems. Now I was looking at the third element today and it was like, I want to control him, period. Like I wanna control him. <laughs> and honestly, it's not just him, but this is where that will show up for me most dynamically. And, you know, we have a very dynamic reality going on right now, so it can come up a lot. And as I really, so, so the way I'm handling this with myself right now is I'm starting to address the energy as it comes up. And usually for me, it comes up as an anger and irritation, right? I know something, something's up, something's up. Now, you could go with that anger and irritation and assume that it's yours and it has something to do with your partner because it did come up in relationship to your partner, right? Or you could just look at it as energy, which is what I've really been strengthening in my own world of just looking at it as energy, okay? It's there. There it is, okay? Now, what can I do with it? Good question. 
So because I've been studying the distractor implants so dynamically, I have a very strong grasp of the fact that there are 24 of these fuckers. Anger, rage, fury, hate, blame, shame, regret, and guilt, addictive, compulsive, perverted, obsessive points of view, love, sex, jealousy, peace, fear, doubt, business, relationship, life, living, death, and reality. 24 energies and points of view and realities that are actually put in place to distract you from the choices you have. So that's really good to have that information. And by the way, you know, Dane in the book actually recommends that you make a list of those 24 and you kind of keep them in front of you, which would be a great purpose for a phone wallpaper. And then every time one of them comes up, you go, oh, that's just a distractor implant. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, online shorts, boys and beyonds and everything that holds them in place. That's how you handle a distractor implant. Now, what I was taught and where I like to go because I also like to control, so this is why it's important to acknowledge this, is I will first go to, oh, I'm pissed and we need to talk about it and I need to say something because then I can have a problem. Now, I'm actually, you know, it's funny even talking about this because I'm not, I'm no longer making myself wrong for that. I'm kind of more just intrigued that what I would rather have in those moments is total control and judging someone then freedom, except it's starting to shift. And so this is the gift of studying the tools because these areas where you're still doing massive insanity um, will start to loosen and there will be more space for you to really start to look at what you would rather choose, right? So this morning I was being with myself and the energy that came up and I'm like, well, he didn't tell me where he was going and he should have, and that must mean, okay. So as soon as you go into meaning, you're into trauma and drama, not something else. So I, I was there with me today. And this is how you start to change things with yourself. You just be with you, right? So I started pock and potting, the right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shirts, boys and beyonds, clearing statement.com statement. I started pock and potting all the distractor implants. Um, and then I just started looking at what I was doing. Anytime you're doing any trauma and drama, all you have to look at is what am I doing with this? So I started now, now when I, when you get present with an energy, not thinking about something, your eyes will go down and you'll actually get to be present with the energy. Um, if you start going up into your head or if you're in your head, then you're functioning from your mind and that's, it's death. Mind equals death. <laughs> Just so you know, like you will always have a problem if you're in your mind. And so I was up there and then I really was like, okay, what am I doing with this? Now with that question, I got present with the energy. <laughs> And the word that came up was control. Now, this is not the first time I've looked at this. Like, I, I, I know I say this all the time, but I grew up in the university of control. Like, control is like one of my favorite things, you know. But I've also been recognizing with the classes I'm facilitating and with everything that I'm choosing that control is also the thing that I use to limit and not receive, you know. And that's the thing right there that has not been working for me anymore. It's like, it doesn't work for me to not actually have access to all receiving anymore. So, so what occurs when that, when, when you start to make a bigger choice, like I've made a bigger choice there is that everywhere where you're still doing the thing that doesn't allow that bigger choice to show up will show up. So now what's showing up for me is everywhere where I'm still actively doing. <sighs> so what am I doing with this control? Okay, cool. So here, insert hack here. I ran this clearing that is a shortcut to getting into allowance of you with whatever you're doing. So I did this, I was like, okay, well, what energy, space and consciousness can me and my body be to be the controlling, dominating bitch I truly be for all eternity? And I started to laugh and everything that doesn't allow it, times a gazillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, buck, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. And the energy changed and I was like, oh, I didn't even have to handle the thing I thought I would need to handle in order to change this. I had to handle what I was doing and just be willing to be it, not judge it anymore. And actually, even now, all that energy has gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, oh, man. Yeah, it changed so much. I wonder where we'll go next with this. So, so. So it's really important to function from those four questions if you want to change something you're doing that's dramatic or traumatic, I guess. And, and maybe that's kind of the wrap up to this whole thing of like, I'm really seeing everywhere I want to do control rather than 
be free. And being free is an interesting thing because it's not that once you make all conscious choices, you'll be free. It's that once you actually get to and acknowledge what's true for you in that moment, that's where the freedom is. So what's true for me in the moment right now is that I want to be a controlling, dominating punta a lot of the time, right? Um, but you know what's more true for me, and that's what's leading me through this, is that I'm having a greater reality no matter what it takes. I am going to have access to more receiving and more awareness of what's really true no matter what it takes. Um, so it's like, yeah, I don't even know where I want to go with that now. I guess what I guess my whole thing with this conversation is like the only thing that's given me more access to being able to look at all of that with no point of view is really studying this stuff. Um, let me read you a little tiny bit from this. This is the last chapter in Living Beyond Distraction, which is really where we're going to go in the call tomorrow. So if you'd like to come and experience a full facilitation call of what it's like to be in the salon, you can come. It's our gift to you. Um, so listen to this. So is my, this is call participant saying this, is my fear of rejection, uh, failing to succeed and disappointing others, a creation of my doubt of me, of my abilities and my capacities? And Gary said, no, no, it's not. It's not the creation of anything at all. You are buying into the distractor implant of doubt and fear. That's it. So if we look at what I'm doing in those moments where I go just wild into control, I am buying into the distractor implant of relationship, jealousy, and peace, and sex, which if you actually look at where we just moved to, so we just moved to Lat Central America, which is part of Latin America. And what I always noticed about Latin America, for example, is that it has available probably the highest level of sexualness, which is the healing, nurturing, caring, generative energies that the earth is of any culture I've ever met. Latin Americans have more sexualness naturally in their bodies and in their worlds than uh, probably almost any culture I've ever met. What's interesting about sexualness is that it is the energy that the earth requires in order to heal and create a different reality. Now, imagine what it would take to entrap most of the sexualness in the world? How much judgment would be required for the beings that have that energy available to them to judge themselves out of existence? And so when I really start to look at that, just from a, an awareness point of view, it's like, yeah, it's like, take the most sexualness in the world and actually wrap it up in the wrongness of being sexual, of the wrongness of being um, generative, of the wrongness of being um, in communion with, which would require some serious distractors, right? Like, so it's, and I, and I can't fully explain this with words, but what I'm, what I'm trying to explain badly is that, you know, there are going to be certain elements that are more prevalent in certain areas of the world than in others. In London, Ontario, jealousy and sex and relationship and all of that, those aren't energies that people really do a lot of. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. I would say in London, Ontario, the energy of death is more prevalent, except for the earth. The earth is alive everywhere you go. But um, honestly, in, in London, like the sense of London, Ontario was more like people move here to die. The sense of Latin America is this really charged, like, energy. And so you will become more aware of different energies depending on where you go in the world. And what I recognized is that the energies of all of the that relationship stuff is very, very, very dominant here in Latin America. So, again, it's like... If so, it's like she's asking in this little section in the book, you know, it, this thing that I'm doing, is that, you know, a creation of my doubt of me and my abilities and my capacities? It's like, no, no, it's not the creation of anything. You're buying into the distractor implant of doubt and fear. Um, if 
if all of Latin America no longer bought into the distractor implant of relationship, what would be available? Like if you look at the commitment and the and the that people have to their children and their families and their husbands and their wives in all of Latin America, what would you would you say it's different than perhaps in North America where I grew up, where pretty much, even though we don't love it, we're willing to divorce our family at the drop of a hat, right? That does not exist here. There is a totally different thing going on here in regards to relationships. So if all of Latin America actually got free of the distractor implant of relationship by recognizing it wasn't real and they had total choice the world would change, you know? Um, so we're just buying into the distractor implant of relationship, just buying into the distractor implant of jealousy. And what I'm really seeing is like, when you don't buy into that, all of a sudden you just have awareness <laughs> of what is and what is has space to it. What is is never dense. What is is never heavy. Even if it's not a pleasant what is, it's never heavy. It's like when I finally discovered that all I was doing was control, um, it was light because that's just what I was doing. It's not who I am. It's not what's true about me. It's just what I was doing. That's true. Okay, cool. What energy, space, and consciousness can me and my body be to be the controlling, dominating bitch I truly be for all eternity? All of a sudden, light, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, puck, all nine shorts, poison beyonds. Now I can cultivate allowance for myself. I can get that what I was doing isn't real. I can perpetrate it or not perpetrate it on him. Um, you get to then have access to the world you'd like to create, the choices that you truly have available. OK, so he goes, it's not the creation of anything at all. Like for me, it's not the creation of any of that. It's that I'm buying into the distractor implant. He's like, every time you have that pock and pod, all the distractor implants creating that. And here's what Gary says. That's all you've got to do, folks. You keep trying to make this difficult. You say, I want to handle my fear. Or for me, I want to handle the relationship. or I want to handle the jealousy. or I want to handle the... <sighs> No, you don't want to handle your fear. You want to pock and pod all the distractor implants. You don't have any fear. Dane goes, you can't handle something that isn't real. Now, the whole, I just came out of a, a talk to the entities advanced and facilitators training. Holy shit, guys, that class. If you want more receiving more of you in your life, you have to get to a talk to the entities class. But the whole beginning, or actually the whole theme of the four days of the Talk to the Entities advanced class was that we keep putting all our attention on what's heavy instead of putting our attention on what's spacious and light. And <laughs> so Dane goes, you can't handle something that isn't real. If it's, it's gonna be heavy if it's not real. Now that is such a, everything's the opposite of what it appears to be thing because it, because it's dense, because it's heavy, because we can feel it, we make it real. When what's really true is light and spacious and, you know, feather touch. That's what's really true. But we don't make that true. We make the heavy, dense stuff true. Um, but he goes, you can't handle that stuff. It's not yours and it's not real. So you keep trying to handle it as if it's real. This is why this shit is so important, because if you don't have this information, you can't even start to apply it to your life, right? He goes, you can, however, take the easy road, just pock and pot it and don't worry about it anymore. And you know what I'm noticing in my own world is I really work with this stuff on a day -to daily, moment by moment basis, because that's what that's what's required to change this shit for yourself, guys. It's not just reading a book and then hoping it'll take effect. It's like the real work comes in your day to day, moment by moment choices, right? So what I'm working on with myself right now is being willing to know that what's heavy isn't true. Oof. Goodness sakes. I'm really willing to know that when I'm a facilitator. In my personal life, I give some of that up and I start to go into the heavy as if it's real and true. So that's where I'm working with myself right now. So it's like what I'm noticing is like I'm willing to have that space and that awareness for a minute. And then the heavy aware, the awareness shows up again, and I'm immediately back into making it real and true and worrying about it again. So it's like there's a muscle to strengthen here for me, definitely. And the reason I'm demanding it of myself is because I don't like trauma and drama are not really my favorite place to live. They were. And sometimes I still do it for fun. But honestly, like I 
I'm demanding of myself that I have a reality beyond this reality fucking all the time. Forget it. I don't care what's going on. And, um, and so I'm having to do some additional work with me to have that and that you're going to have to discover this for yourself. What do you want to have? Do you want to, are you looking at consciousness as a pill to take so that you can feel better or are you going to have to get to work and actually work with yourself in these moments? So, yeah. So what I'm realizing is like, I'm needing to find the place where I would be willing to let this stuff shift totally and not make it real anymore. And that's requiring something different of me. So here's what Dane says to do with this stuff. When we go to the dense, are we looking for the feeling to justify and identify it? Well, you're looking to find, well, I don't know what you're looking for. I know when I, when in the heaviness occurs or the reaction is beginning for me, I'm looking for, I immediately, very first thing, go to my mind. So my mind will start running. So that's all the addictive, compulsive, obsessive points of view, right? You're into distractor implants already. And I'm looking for what caused it. Now, what's interesting about that is that you're assuming just even in looking for what caused it, that something could cause it. And the thing about any of that hurt or being victimized or being attacked, and let's, I mean, we'll take it to its extreme because this is like that in a mild version, is that nothing can happen to you unless you allow it. And this is the insidious thing about distractor implants, because you can even only be implanted with something if you've aligned and agreed with it or resisted and reacted to it in the first place. So nothing can actually happen to you. You've got to be on board for anything to occur. So what I'm recognizing in those moments, in the heaviness where I buy it and I go looking for the cause, is I've already, in looking for the cause, bought into that it's real immediately. And that's where I'm working with myself to catch that piece. And so what I'm noticing in the working with that is that um, I'm not always willing to know that it's not true. There's many times I really want it to be true so that I can do control. Right or wrong. That's true. Um, you know, so it would really behoove me if I really want to change this to be in a lot more allowance of myself doing control because I'm still judging that I'm doing it while doing it and that holds it all in place. And again, like if you once you start to find out that you're doing something like control, you can run a clearing and just, you know, cultivate more allowance for yourself there. Like what energy, space and consciousness can be in my body be to be the controlling, dominating bitch I truly be for all eternity. That's a gift because it acknowledges something I'm choosing constantly. Now, so, so what Dane is saying for us to do in the book um, is make a list of all these distractor implants because you got to educate yourself and really wash yourself in the fact that these sh this shit isn't true. Listen, they're not the true. It's here to distract me. Carry it in your pocket. Take it everywhere you go. And then look at the list all the time to see whether you're doing a distractor implant and if you are, pock and pot it. Now, <sighs> I know that most of my shows about the salon so far have been about the distractor implants, mostly just because we've spent six months studying this. But listen to me, six months studying this stuff. And I still have, you know, there's still work to be done. And so my, my, my question to you is like, what is it that you are trying to change? You know, this is, this is something that I've functioned from and as probably for as long as I can remember. Right. It's what my mom did. It's what we did in our family. Um, I've been through two divorces. This is my third pretty major relationship. Um, you know, it's going to take a minute to outcreate it. And I cannot outcreate something that is a problem. I can outcreate something that I'm buying into or making real and true that isn't. That I can outcreate because then I can just recognize when I'm buying what it is what I can do with it and how I can change it. And which is why it's so important to really educate yourself on this stuff. This next month, we're diving into the 10 keys to total freedom, which is honestly, I'm so excited about it. I'm like, what is going to come out of this? Because Gary literally says like, you can handle anything in your life from the 10 keys to freedom. Right. And so we'll probably spend two to three weeks on each key. It's the first one is would an infinite being truly choose this? Now, how many of you have worked that key into your life? 
and how many of you know it as an intellectual piece of property? What's it gonna be like to work that into my life? Would an infinite being truly choose to create trauma and drama? No. Then for what reason am I? Good question. What am I doing with that, right? And then we circle back around to the conversation I have with myself. What am I doing with this? For what reason am I doing this? Oh, control. That's it? I just want control? Yeah. Oh, oh. now I can choose that or something else, right? So I really just want to invite you to come check it out. You can always, um, the link will be above my head. If it's not in this particular moment, it will be. And you can come join us for this ongoing study. And also, and if you want to just do it on your own, you can do that too. I really recommend Living Beyond Distraction and the 10 Keys to Total Freedom as a starting point for, you know, working the tools in your life, into your life. But, you know, what's really possible for you? Are you doomed to an endless cycle of trauma and drama or something else? Do you have to tolerate things? Or can you start to acknowledge what is and choose? Like what's really gonna work for you? What's gonna make your life work the way that you'd like it to work? I, for one, am really asking for something different with my reality and it's requiring me to choose something different all the time. Okay, fine, new muscles. What would be required of you? Happy changing. If you liked it, share it. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the Taste of Salon or somewhere else in the world. And I'll definitely, definitely see you next week. Bye for now.